A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have this ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. Rather, we have renounced shameful, hidden things, not acting deceitfully or falsifying the word of God, but by the open declaration of the truth, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. The word of the Lord. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gethsemane, uh, Genesaric, and two boats came alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him, to put out a short distance from the shore. There, he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were near bursting. They signaled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They were filled with they filled both boats so that they were in danger of sinking. 
When Simon Peter saw this, he fell to his knees of, to the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. To the, for for astonishment at the catch of fish they had made, they they seized him and all of them and all of those with them. And likewise, James and John and the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon, Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, for from now on you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to be Jesus Christ. The miracle of the miraculous catch of fish is most instructive for us priests, especially as we conclude days of special grace for our priestly mission of pastoral charity. Our Lord had been teaching the many who were hungry for the truth and were pressing in on him and listening to the word of God. After he had finished teaching the crowd from the boat of, of Simon Peter, he asked Peter to do something which seemed quite unreasonable, to put out the nets for a catch after an entire night of fishing without any catch at all. Although Peter pointed out to our Lord the seeming futility of the request, he recognized the authority of the one who had made the request, and he obeyed. Even as the word of our Lord had brought truth to the ears of the crowd, even so his same word brought a bountiful sign of God's presence and favor. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. Before the miracle of Christ the high priest, who taught with authority and whose teaching was accompanied by signs of abundant divine grace, Simon Peter fell to his knees and confessed his unworthiness to be an apostle, to be a priest in the person of Christ, the high priest. It seems that James and John, the other two apostles present, were seized by the same sense of unworthiness, and rightly so from a human perspective. Our Lord responded to their sense of unworthiness their sense that they must leave his company because of their sinfulness with these words to Simon Peter. Do not be afraid, from now on you will be catching men. His words were clearly also accompanied by strong grace, for the gospel account concludes, when they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him the grace to respond to Christ's call to their divine vocation would have its ultimate completion in the grace of priestly consecration at the Last Supper for the continuation of Christ's mission of pastoral charity in every time and place until his return in glory on the last day. The grace of priestly consecration was indeed demanding to the supreme degree for the apostles. Peter, James, and John would labor tirelessly in the face of fierce opposition to teach the word of Christ and to bring his sacramental grace to the world. Despite their sinfulness, they gave their lives completely to Christ. 
Peter and James ultimately in the martyrdom of blood and John in the martyrdom of witness. St. Paul expresses in a powerful way the reality of the priestly consecration which he received as the last of the apostles in the face of tremendous opposition and resulting discouragement he remained faithful and strong even unto death for as he declared but we hold this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing power may be of god and not from us the truth is that were priestly power of us and not of God, were the priestly mission our work and not the work of Christ, God the Son incarnate, our high priest, then we would have every reason to be discouraged and defeated. St. Paul reflects upon the temptations from within, shameful, hidden things, and the temptations from without, acting deceitfully and falsifying the word of God with which he contended. We know the same temptations in our priestly mission, especially in a totally secularized culture which urges also us to do the shameful without shame and which would constrain us to be correct in our speech, that is to fail in our duty to preach and teach what is good and true and beautiful in a world which glorifies that which is evil, false, and ugly. In the words of St. Paul, to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. But we also know the power of God's grace at work within us, notwithstanding our inner weakness and the forces of evil about us. The grace of our priestly consecration, the grace to proclaim openly the truth of Christ and to minister tirelessly his love to all our brothers and sisters, especially those in most need. God's grace at work within us through the sacrament of orders enable us, enables us to declare with St. Paul, for we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your, as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. Reflecting upon the great gift of the priestly vocation and priestly ordination and its inherent mission, we recall today the memory of an heroic brother in the ordained priesthood St. John Leonardi, living at the time of the implementation of the reforms mandated by the Council of Trent, he knew the temptations to mitigate and falsify the much needed reform and remain silent and inactive before the disease in the world and in the church which he had been ordained to bring the healing, purifying, and strengthening grace of Christ, head and shepherd ever alive for us in his holy church. He carried out his priestly mission in the particular situation of his time at the cost of becoming an exile from his own city of Lucca in Italy and of suffering rejection from ecclesiastical authority and his brother priests. But he and the brother priests who were responding in a similar way to the demands of the grace of orders and who had joined him in the congregation of secular priests he formed relied upon the grace of God and they remained faithful and strong. Our Lord sent him the consolation of the encouragement and help of St. Philip Neri and eventually ecclesiastical recognition from Pope Clement VIII. His brother priests and he became renowned for their force in advancing the Tridentine reform in Italy. He also was instrumental 
in the establishment of the Society for the Propagation of the Faith to aid the Church in its preaching of the Gospel to all the nations. His priestly life was consummated when he died from a disease con contracted in caring for the victims of the plague. Having completed these days of spiritual retreat, let us go forth with confidence in the grace of our priestly consecration. Let us go forth with the confidence of the apostles, Peter, Paul, James, and John, and of St. John Leonardi, to teach and preach the truth, to celebrate the sacraments for the souls in our care, and to lead them into an ever deeper life of prayer and devotion, and to guide and discipline the same souls in accord with divine truth and love. Let us go forth not confident in ourselves, but confident in Christ. Let us go forth ever certain that our souls have been configured to him, head and shepherd of the flock in every time and place, and that the indelible character, sacramental character imprinted on our souls contains superabundant grace for our priestly life, no matter how long or how short it may be in time. Let us hear the words of Christ to his first priests, words that he speaks to us as his beloved brothers in the priestly vocation and mission. Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Let us now place anew our priestly hearts into the glorious pierced heart of Jesus. One in heart, with his Eucharistic heart. Let us offer in his person the sacrifice of Calvary by which he has saved the world from sin and death and by which he feeds us with the heavenly bread of his body, blood, soul, and divinity until the day he returns to bring us finally to our eternal destiny, the heavenly wedding feast of his espousal to us in the church. May our priestly hearts rest always securely in the glorious pierced heart of Jesus, our High Priest, and find there alone the inspiration and strength to be true shepherds of souls, teachers of divine truth, and instruments of divine love. Heart of Jesus, salvation of those who trust in thee, have mercy on us. Virgin Mother of God, Mother of Priests. St. Joseph, Foster Father of Jesus and True Spouse of the Virgin Mary. St. John Leonardi. St. John Mary Vianney. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>